Hello everyone, this is Ron from iTech Legion and uh, the market for mid-tower gaming cases lately has been very competitive, especially around the sub-100 price point. Uh, the established names, of course, are offering high quality builds while the uh, more lesser known names are offering a lot more features. So reconciling what you need uh, in between those is important if you are going to be critical with your purchases. So. Uh, Cooler Master, of course, one of the most well-known names in uh, gaming cases. Uh, they did it start at the top, of course. They they built their way up, and uh, they have, of course, their uh, half series. They have their regular uh, their Centurion series, and uh, they also have their gaming line, their CM Storm line. And in case you see behind me as the CM Storm Scout 2 case, we previously reviewed the Gunmetal Gray version, but this is the advanced version, meaning they have added features into it. Uh, but the good news is that they are maintaining the same MSRP as the previous Scout 2K. So they're basically giving you more for the same price. And it's also now offered in a white version that will retail for, I believe, uh, $10 more for $109.99 compared to the $9.99 MSRP. So that's uh, that's definitely sub $199. And, uh, well, let's go to Time Warp and check back... Uh, when, when I unbox the system and see what we can find inside. The CM Storm Scout 2 Advanced case comes in a midnight black color that you see here and it's also available in a gunmail gray version. Cooler Master is also offering a new white version for those who want the uh, popular all-white look. And uh, the CM Storm Scout 2 Advanced case measures 2030 by 513 by 517.5 millimeters. And it has that signature carrying handle on top for those who want to take it out to a LAN party. At the top, you'll find a fully ventilated top area. You have the signature handle, which actually has a rubberized grip. You have the large power button right in the middle. You have the LED toggle switch and a reset switch. You have a CM Storm logo right in the middle and a recessed I.O. area. We have a pair of USB 2.0 ports and a pair of USB 3.0 ports as well as a headphone and a microphone jack. At the front, you'll find the power LED as well as three five and a quarter inch external drive bays, which are perforated for airflow. At the bottom front area, you see that it's also meshed for airflow, because right behind these are the two intake fans, which were added in the advanced version. These are two LED fans you see here, 120 millimeters, and right behind that, you can see the panel. Uh, three kinds of honeycomb mesh there, the large ones, the medium ones, and a, it's a very, very fine mesh one that will similarly acts as a dust filter of sorts, but you still need to kind of remove the entire front panel and vacuum it out if you want to clean it out. Also, if you want to remove a drive bay cover, just simply press the uh, locks here on each side and push. If you want to install a five and a quarter inch um, external device. At the bottom you'll find ventilation holes for the power supply here on the rear. You have a dust filter as well that's removable. Similarly, right in the middle there is a dust filter for the optional 120 millimeter intake fan. And there are four feet that are rubber sold. See here, large surface area for the rubber. To, uh, for additional grip so it stays on the floor or maybe on top of your desk and these raise the CM Storm Scout to advance by about a centimeter off the ground. Here in your left side panel it has an acrylic viewing window and also it has a uh, 120 millimeter fan mounting at the bottom. There's actually two of them and this whole area on the side is raised and it's evenly matched on the other side. Now what this allows uh, is for installation of taller CPU heat sinks uh, compared to the regular clearance and uh, these side panels, well they're quite snug at the beginning since uh, they're 
fresh off the box, so you might need to take your screwdriver to kind of loosen them up, but otherwise they are thumb screws, and they have this hand right in the middle, so you can just pull that handle out for uh, convenient removal. So they, they use uh, tools to lock these side panels in place, so it will be sometimes can be really stuck if you don't use a screwdriver at the beginning. There you go. The thumb screws removed. Pull it out. Of course, there are more protective covering there. And inside, you also get the accessory pack and uh, the user's manual. It's the user's guide. Let me take out the accessory here. Includes, of course, the coolest rail. It's an name Brown Box. Side. There are more rails. Uh, let me just pour out the entire contents of the box so we can go over it. There's nothing left inside. Let's see how many caddies you get. You get two, four, six, eight, ten. So five for five drives. And uh, there's also 2.5 inch adapters. They also come with uh, that right here. So there's seven in total. I believe the non-advanced case only provided six so that uh, bumps the number up to seven. Okay, so you can actually fully populate the 3.5 inch drive base there and uh, these uh, 2.5 inch mounting uh, handles. Let me just grab the last one here. Well. They provide two now. You can install one on the top side and you install one at the bottom side. So essentially you can install up to four SSDs using these. And the accessory pack, see here, you get a bunch of cable ties. You get this uh, Kensington lock option, option in case you want to take it out uh, and bring it to a LAN party. You have your speaker for the motherboard for uh, debugging. You see, that's quite long. And a whole bunch of screws here. Of course, the, the brass colored ones are obviously the standoffs. You have the uh, standoff adapter here. You can install with a screwdriver. You get the brass standoffs. You get these uh, fan uh, fan screws, quite long. And you get the shorter ones for, uh, I'm not sure if these are for, for fan or for radiator mounting. I'll check it out later once we uh, do the installation video. And of course the motherboard uh, screws. And that's pretty much the accessories. So I'm going to put this all aside now and let's take a closer look at the features found inside. Side, get the front panel cables here. Let's see how long they are, if uh, they're sufficient. They appear to be. They're actually pre-routed already there. And just with a USB 3.0 header, which are the 19 pin headers. Just standard now for uh, modern motherboards. You get the HD audio with the AC97 for older motherboards. You get the USB 2.0 header and of course the uh, all the connectors here for the uh, reset, hard drive, LED, and power LED. This is a, for the power LED has those uh, two small ones that are separated. And uh, let's see what else is here. Uh, reset switch, of course, and the power switch. And that's pretty much it for that. And uh, also have uh, cable routing areas. I see. Let me just look up here. One right here. One, uh, two on the side. And these are, all have these. Uh, and rubber grommets that kind of hold the, the cables in place. At the bottom you have a large one and also it fits a standard ATX, a micro ATX and a mini ATX form factor motherboard inside and a generous large CPU uh, backplate cutout. You also have cable routing airs right here on top, might be a bit hard to see and also one right here in the corner for your 8-pin CPU power and uh, 
Notice here you have three five and a quarter inch drive bed. These are toolless. These are very, very easy to use. You can see there, you just move it to the open position. You want to open it and move it back to lock. You want to lock it in place. You also get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three and a half inch drive bays. And with the adapter, uh, you can populate two of those with an SSD drive or up to four. And this bottom one right here, uh, this actually hard drive plate right here can be removed. There are four screws. Still that a bit. There's one, two, three, four screws in there. You can remove this if you want to install a longer video card such as an HD 6990 or a D7990 or a uh, GTX 690 from uh, NVIDIA. And also if you decide to keep this, you can also install a 120 millimeter fan here as there are fan mounting options uh, located right in there and uh, of course we saw the intake fans right in there and the rear fan here it's a 120 millimeter fans I believe the non vest version had an LED rear fan now the LED is in the front and you just basically have a regular black fan here at the back it's a cooler master fan and uh, let's remove the cable here so you can see see how long that is actually a three pin fan connector and I like that all the cables are actually black so it uh, keeps the aesthetic clean and uh, since you have a side viewing window it's important to keep that going at the top here uh, let me just show you because I couldn't sh uh, show it clearly earlier in my last shot here uh, you get uh, you can remove the see these latches holding the top cover in place you can remove that and you can see that there are uh, mounting holes here for fans. It's 120 millimeters, so you can install a 240 millimeter fan in there. Let me actually just uh, show you how to remove that latch. Actually, there you go. You actually push it in like so. And push it on top. Uh, and measure the clearance here. If you can install, uh, 240 millimeter radiators are quite popular. Lately, so let's measure the clearance from the. If you can, uh, it's about 35, uh, not even 34 millimeters maximum here. So at best, maybe 30 millimeter clearance. So that's enough for uh, for one radiator. I don't know if you can put in a fan there. Maybe depending on your, uh, if you have a motherboard that's older, it doesn't have the eight pin sitting right on top and the dim slot sitting on top. It might fit. We'll check it out later once you do our installation video, but 30 millimeters is sitting it quite close. What you can do is, of course, uh, most thinner radiators are about 27 millimeter. You can put a 27 millimeter radiator inside probably and put in um, the fans outside right on top. You just measure the spacing here. You have standard, of course, 15 mil uh, for the standard 15 mil for the fan spacing. So you can definitely put uh, a 240 millimeter radiator on top and have the fans. Uh, externally, although of course your fans will be exposed when it is on top, and uh, you can't put in the cover, uh, you can't put in this cover here. Plus, the the latches will probably be blocking the way. Here, the rear, of course, you saw the 120 millimeter exhaust fan, and uh, you get also two pre-cut and grommeted water cooling holes if you want to mount the rear externally, and you also get, of course, I/O. Um, IO area right here and uh, you get seven PCI expansion slots these are uh, you can see they're solid but uh, they appear to be removable and reusable unlike other cases uh, that's a good thing and also you get this uh, storm guard protection which uh, allows you to of course uh, uh, secure your mouse cable during a LAN party you want to route that around and uh, of course you have to open the case but well, actually, not really. Yeah, you probably need to lock it. See if there's an option to lock it somewhere. Actually, no. You just use a thumb screw to remove that. So uh, <laughs> I think it would be preferable if the lock was somewhere inside. Well, uh, either way, that's still that will buy you some time before somebody can actually totally steal your mouse. Uh, they would have to put in a lot of effort to do that. Similar to the left side panel, the right side panel has uh, Kind of embossed area right here and it's held in place by thumb screws and just pull that up seal it quite snug this is fresh from the factory so let me just uh some, some more effort on it there you go 
very very solid side panel by the way I doubt you can bend it I can't uh, I can't even twist it I don't think you can even deform it if you sit on it that's a good thing of course if you're going to be taking your case out uh, the land part you want it to be durable and uh, here we go let's see the connectors here we haven't checked out the similar to the back the fans to the front have the they're all black cables and they're both also a uh, using a three pin connector and let's free some more cables here and this is the LED toggle switch which both fans are also connected to of course you want if you want to disconnect that or reconnect a different uh, fan you can use these connectors but there's, there's only room for two I don't think they have uh, extra I guess you want to install a rear fan controller, uh, rear fan uh, LED toggle. Well, anyway, let's move that aside. See that there's plenty of area right here. This is where you will route, of course, your uh, your connectors for your hard drive or your SSD when you plug it in. You route your cables back here, and you plug it all. You leave all the cables here on this side. And let's also measure the clearance, um, the side panel right here. It's about uh, two centimeters of clearance. That should be uh, generous even for a uh, 24 pin cable power. Typical uh, mid tower cases only provide one centimeter, which unfortunately is quite tight for a 24 pin uh, power supply cable. And the uh, good thing about that is that uh, the side panel is also extruded, so it gives you additional more, a few more millimeters of space. So definitely plenty of room for cable management. And what you now, of course, speaking of cable management, is to just Throw in our components inside and assemble a system inside the CM Storm Scout 2 advanced case and see how well it performs. there you have it if you want to check out the video for the assembly of the components just click on the information below and I outlined a couple of things there and I also showed how to install a large CPU cooler as you see uh, it tested in there the Fatex DC 14 PE and also I showed how to install a 240 millimeter radiator inside uh, which leads me to some of the likes and dislikes that I have for this case of course, the fact that uh, this, when I previously reviewed the non-invest version, I almost gave it an editor's choice. It was very close. My only concern was the fact that the feet uh, were smaller. Uh, and although they are actually better than the, the Trooper case feet, in my opinion, but uh, I would have still preferred beefier feet considering the case is meant to be for uh, for external use, for, uh, for rugged uh, land partying. Uh, of course, this is a lot different now. A lot of people are probably not really going to be using the case in terms of that. Uh, in that case, it's, 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 it, it can handle the weight perfectly well if it's just sitting on top of your desk. But if you are going to take it out, I suggest going for an aftermarket solution. In fact, I saw a lot of CM Storm Trooper and CM Storm uh, Scout cases uh, during CES earlier this year. We went, we went to visit Las Vegas and every single CM Storm Trooper case I saw had an aftermarket uh, uh, feet uh, they use because the regular feet of that was well it, it broke a lot easily compared to uh, the compared to a typical case feet um, although as I said the case feet on the CM Storm uh, Scout 2 is of course an improvement I still would have preferred beefier options uh, also considering the there was no price increase I was surprised that they were actually able to uh, put in two fans not just one fan for intake so that was very good that just for that price alone uh, one f going from one exhaust fan to two intake fan and one exhaust fan is, is a big deal and with no price change that is a definite de definite definite plus and uh, also the fact that uh, now there is a white version now the white version will be available for ten dollars more one oh nine ninety nine uh, I we talked to I believe we talked to Cooler Master at uh, CS this year and they it all this uh, it was a different process with with the, with the, something to do with the painting. Uh, it was harder to to get all the components in white 
than uh, just the black and the gunmetal gray. I believe they would also be offering a gunmetal gray version still. And uh, they also have a the improvement for the uh, drive rails. When I initially reviewed the Scout 2 case, it, it had seven mounting uh, slots in the hard drive cage for hard drives, but it only included six hard drive rails, so that didn't make sense. So uh, thankfully now they have seven hard drive rails, so you can actually fully populate all of that. Plus they threw in one more uh, SSD adapter. They included uh, the typical SSD adapter that Cooler Master provides in their cases can fit up to two 2.5 inch drives, uh, one on top and one on the bottom, and they threw in one more so you can fit in up to four SSDs, which is a good thing since uh, there are many, many people now that are actually running, uh, with the price of SSDs as low as they are, people are actually running uh, SSDs in RAID uh, for maximum performance. And also, uh, let me go through things I did not like uh, with my previous Scout 2 review. I, I did not like the fact that the PCIe slot covers were not perforated, so there was there was really no airflow going out of them. But uh, considering they're removable, you can just remove them uh, if you want, uh, you know, to maximize your GPU cooling potential. But of course, it's going to attract dust. Uh, what most people are not really concerned about, considering the entire front face is essentially a high airflow design. And I was also I, I didn't check it check out last time just how much clearance there was. Uh, compared to this time, just click on my installation video. You can see what I mean when I uh, when I when I explored just how much clearance there was for the CPU. Uh, Cooler Master was being modest with when they said that they had 162 millimeter CPU clearance. When there's actually I, I was able to fit the Fantex DC 14P, which is 171 millimeters tall. Uh, that's with a fan, and uh, that's 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 surprising. And uh, the fact that uh, you can put in enthusiast components and also put in VGA uh, video cards that are as long as the AG6990 just by simply removing the panel, that's a big plus. And uh, that's pretty much it. I've said a lot of things already. Oh, I didn't mention just how good the build is. You're probably wondering. It, it looks a lot better than the photos in person, uh, as with, of course, most case designs, except for some. <laughs> That uh, if you notice, it, some manufacturers would just put in instead of using photos, they use renders. Uh, that those are usually the, the cases that I don't trust. But uh, the Cooler Master Storm Scout 2 is actually quite gorgeous. In fact, the white version also also quite wonderful. Uh, I'm, it's it's really uh, justifying the extra ten dollars price for the white version because it looks definitely looks a lot better than the. Uh, black version you see here. You can see the white version uh, in, our C in our CES 2013 video. We checked out the CES suite, uh, Cooler Master CES suite, and they had the white version there. And the white version also has a, uh, a white LED fan instead of uh, red LED fans. So it actually matches the, the look of it. Uh, it's not just the, they didn't just throw in uh, the paint there and add it $10. Uh, and like other case manufacturers, essentially just uh, drill a hole on the bottom and call it the additional SSD mounting. Well, anyway. I love the case. I am, I've decided to bump it up from gold to editor's choice. There are some shortcomings, but I I can easily overlook that considering the build quality is impeccable. The side panels are really, really sturdy. You can, you can use it as a weapon, essentially. And it's also uh, very durable, uh, with exception, of course, the feet. Uh, everything feels rugged except for the feet. That was my only concern. But other than that, uh, if it's just going to sit on your desk anyway, it's it is, it's a, one of the most well-rounded mid-tower cases I've ever seen. Uh, and plus, the, the market is very competitive right now, uh, so it's interesting to see that the uh, Cooler Masters is still uh, is still on top of the uh, on top of their game and delivering very solid product. Well, anyway, that's pretty much it. You can read the rest of the review and uh, some more opinions here that I couldn't include in the video. Uh, clicking on the link below at www.hightechlegion.com. Leave questions or comments. We'll try to answer it as best as we can. Um, contact, contact us at Facebook at facebook.com slash hdlreviews. Uh, tweet at us at uh, twitter.com slash hightechlegion. Uh, visit our forums at hightechlegion.com slash forum. And once again, this is Ron signing out.